Historically regarded as the gold of the sea, beach de mer or sea cucumber has long been a valuable commodity to the people of Papua New Guinea. The cousin of the starfish, the sea cucumber is also an important part of the marine ecosystem, both as a food source for various aquatic animals and a consumer of tiny sea particles like algae. Whilst it may not appear appetizing, this squashy slow-moving creature is a delicacy in some cultures and fetches a high export price to many countries such as China. Prior to 2009, Beach de Mer was considered PNG's second highest fisheries export earner after tuna. Its export peaked at 700 tons valued at more than 12 million US dollars a year. Due to its high market value, the species is naturally vulnerable to overfishing. Furthermore, beach demand numbers take time to replenish as the creatures need high density to reproduce. When males and females are found far apart from each other, reproduction can be poor. The more animals you have, the more successful fertilization will take place. These animals are known as external fertilizers. The sperms and eggs are produced by both male and female living together. When the eggs and sperms are released into the uh, sea, the current then mixes those eggs and sperm, ending up in successful fertilization. In 2009, the National Fisheries Authority observed that the national stocks of sea cucumber were nearing depletion and imposed a nationwide ban on all harvesting, fishing and trade. Between the years 2000 and 2009, statistics show that annual production was maintained above 390 tons per year. Overfishing was driven by people's need for money as the dried product was a valuable commodity. For many, harvesting sea cucumber was not only for personal consumption, but as an income generator and an important means for sustaining a livelihood. Socioeconomic surveys indicated that 22 to 47 percent of household incomes are generated by beach de mer. For those involved in the trading of the beach de mer, the ban has had a huge impact on their lives. It was a devastating effect on the business. So we sold, we sold our um, dinghy outboard motors. We sold two. We had a dump truck and a utility. We sold and a car. So we actually went backwards. Um, we didn't have a plan B because uh, uh, sea cucumber is our life. It's called sea cucumber or beach demia. That's our life because we, we started this business when we were small, even though we had our basis. So. Mohale had strong connections with the beach demia market, one of the few Papua New Guineans with an export license. When he was trading with the Asians, the population was in abundance around his home, Fisherman Island, a few kilometers off Port Mosby. The product was all around, and we didn't have to go very far. We used to collect around here, just around the island, and uh, we call it our goal because uh, you know it's uh, it's, it's very uh, expensive. It's it's this is right here on the beach. You just collect it, harvest it, come and dry it, cook it right, and sell it. Just one day you make money. We knew the trade well. We knew how to how to uh, properly care for it. How to uh, uh, dry it and process it and uh, you know make it uh, so that the, the, the Asians could you know buy it at a good price so we maintain the quality uh, of the product and you know it was like you know we could feel it all yet with this you know he wants BC trading spot his business fell apart after the ban what's left is an empty space and an old shed which once housed havens for processing it was people like Mohale and hundreds of other small fishermen in the 14 maritime provinces, driven by its high value, contributed to the overfishing of the animal. One law for some people and another law for the ordinary people. I'm, sea cucumber is, you know, it, it's a renewable uh, product. It can replenish and then, you know. So, you know, if you put a bed for three years and then extend it for six years, you're killing the people. 
So the government needs to be very, very critical on sustaining the lives of people. And for us coastal people, we depend on this. And like you, you put the ban on sea, on the betul nut, the sea cucumber, we are gone. So what I'm saying is that the gov government needs to regulate it properly so we are not disappointed. Yeah. Their population has been over harvested all throughout the nation. So in 2009, when the ban came into effect, well, sea cucumber, they're they not fast growing, uh, you know, animals, slow growing. You know, some maybe reach a, a, a maturity in maybe five, ten years. Uh, they're, they're so slow, uh, slow growers. Dr. Ralph Mana is a lecturer at the University of Papua New Guinea in marine biology. In 2013, he conducted an in-depth survey into the number of sea cucumbers in the Millen Bay area four years after the ban was imposed and delivered recommendations to the National Fisheries Authority. The results of his survey indicate that the species has indeed been overfished and there is evidence to suggest that certain species may be extinct in certain areas. Overall, Boundary Bay of the population is not that uh, profound. Okay, the population is still recovering. Okay, most of the species. His survey also suggested that there are some areas that have made a comeback so the overpopulated region should be harvested to prevent the animal from shrinking in size. During the five-year closure, the NFA has carried out its own surveys to assess levels of recovery. Last year was the, uh, about the 82 to 83 uh, animals per hectare. So we've seen some recovery coming back. But whether that recovery that is coming back is sufficient for us to, to be able to reopen the fishery, that's something that we will determine in the course of this year. Because this year is the last, last uh, year of the closure. So that's, this year is, uh, uh, is very important because we really need to make some really important decisions on that particular fishery. Despite the ban, there are instances of illegal fishing mostly unreported. Responsible. And because when they put the moratorium, they don't have the, uh, the surveillance, they don't have the, uh, the, uh, the necessary uh, resources to supervise and to, to check the stock every now and then. Because we're only one Navy boat. How do you know that people in other parts of the country are not harvesting when you don't have the resources to, to control the, uh, the, the, the ban and to, to know that people are not, you know, not collecting? Because you don't have the resource going to check them every day, every month and every hour. So you see, it's, it's no point putting a ban when you don't have the resources to check that the ban is being you know, carried out. Windows of export still happening, in, or not export, but illegal smuggling through Indonesia and uh, uh, in, uh, Indonesia uh, from Daru and Manimo. The question now is whether the ban will be lifted at the end of the year's planned or further extended. This year is critical for the NFA to make that important decision. Currently, the NFA has indicated it is looking at lifting the ban temporarily. Surveys show that people are observing the ban, taking into consideration only certain species and only in selected regions. In Tonga, it took about uh, 10 to 15 years mm -hmm. to try and uh, bring back the fishery. Uh, for us, you notice we have six, almost six years. And we are only 82 animals per hectare. We started off with 1,000 animals per hectare. With six years, only 82. Despite plans to lift the ban, Dr. Mana says more surveys are needed in order to take appropriate actions and decisions for the future of the beach de mer. Well, before we actually lift the ban, as I've said, you have to go down there and do the survey, extensive survey. Without the survey, how can you, how can you talk? about, oh, there are less sea cucumbers there, or there are more sea cucumbers, but you're not going to say anything. This is like five years of ban now, or more. And unless you have any survey, recent survey, you cannot say anything. 
A workable and sustainable management plan for the future of Beach de Mer will be achieved when locals are involved in the management of their own resources. We regulate it properly so we are not disadvantaged. Other people have their oil and their gold, but this is our goal. And if you put a stop to it, we are good. Leading Beach de Mer exporting provinces like Milan Bay, Western, Central, New Island and Manus provinces have questioned the amount of time and effort put into assessing the recovery of the fishery. NFA has put a substantive amount of money into the recovery of the fishery and work is continuing on rectifying the reviewed Beach de Mer management plan to have provincial and local level governments participation in managing the resource. The plan was managed at the national level, but now we're working with the provincial government to be managed by the, the provinces at the local level. Uh, uh, government uh, basically to manage the, the resources. Sea cucumbers are an important part of the ecosystem. Complete depletion will affect the food chain. You know, vacuum the, uh, you know, they vacuum cleaners if you like. They have to clean all the detritus and you know from the, from the bottom of the sea. And of course, other animals feed on the sea cucumbers. So they're part of the ecosystem. They're important. After five years, pressure is now on the NFA to announce whether it will lift the ban for all maritime provinces, for selected provinces, or only for selected areas in certain provinces. And based on scientific information, we can then consider uh, opening for a short period of time nationwide, basically to test the effectiveness of our currently revised management plan. This is the last year of that uh, the, the band. And what we're doing this year is basically to assess ourselves uh, in terms of uh, where the population is. Is it, is it okay for us to reopen the fishery again or is it, uh, is it not okay for us to reopen? To understand just how much the PMIZ is going to affect the people's lives, we took a fishing trip with local fisherman Poin Kaspar. Poin explains how difficult it is for many locals to catch fish from waters they claim has already been polluted by waste from a tuna cannery. Currently, you catch nothing. When you go out during the night, zero. Jeep, you don't catch even a single fish. We struggle all night, you cannot catch any fish. So that's the situation. That's the reality in here. While Medang's Pacific Marine Industrial Zone remains a hot topic that draws to attention issues ranging from socio-economic, environmental and land issues, majority of politicians have remained quiet. But those key political heads are driving for the project to happen with pressure being put into the formation of integrated landowner groups. The project began when the idea was first tabled by the Medang provincial government and later taken over by the national government. Since then, a loan from the Chinese Exim Bank valued at 72 million US dollars has allowed the project to begin. I find it fascinating that the government can borrow money to, from China to let the Chinese build it and then rent it back again, all provided by the state. But Sumka MP Ken Fairweather has raised concerns about the plight of the SEC clan who own much of the land that the PMIZ will be built on. If you go to SEC Harbour today, you'll find 15 to 20 vessels all there, all spewing their bilges into the, into the lagoon. The SEC clan have spoken of being marginalized on their own land. Some of the land was taken in the colonial era and ownership was shifted between the church and the government. Recently, their land has been taken up for the PMIZ project.
The Sumka MP's concerns comes after resource owners staged numerous canoe protests. The protest was held to draw government attention to the waste damage on their traditional fishing grounds that will be caused by 10 proposed canneries. <laughs> Landowners have learned hard lessons from the RD Tuna cannery that operates on what used to be traditional land. Nancy Sullivan, an anthropologist who has been following the PMIZ saga, explains people will be looking for opportunities for jobs, education, and land to build homes. You know, markets. Nobody's in the, none of the industry players really want to get an environmental picture of this because they would have to pay for the environmental cost that it would be. So there's a underwater uh, <coughs> sublease that the people of Sec Island will have to go. Mostly the people of Ward 8 will have to go. Fairweather, in this interview, alleged that deals were made in secret involving former politicians, leaving the people out. The people have been promised SMEs and all these kind of things, but no one's identified what they actually are. The petition given last week Thursday calls for an investigation by the Ombudsman Commission into those involved in the decision making since the PMIZ project began. A petition was given to Prime Minister Peter O'Neill and Medang Governor Jim Cass to stop the PMIZ project. Landowners from six villages in the impact areas want the PMIZ project stopped, while a landowner company claiming to represent the Baitata people are pushing for it to happen. National government, provincial government, the people, we blah by owning this project. Uh, whatever losses long, uh, whatever losses of simple ground or whatever, right. and Mibla by Kisim compensation has not a cash payment, but uh, our involvement in there. The money is awesome. Yes, long awesome uh, business equity, uh, participation, all that will uh, help us uh, uh, be compensated. So, when the petition was presented last week Tuesday, it nearly turned into a brawl when a group of men and their landowner company with backing from a former politician gave opposition. Department of Environment Conservation, they will not allow the environment to be damaged. All by treaty, all by treaty, all waste. Now make sure I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good land at the Chatham Cross of Wara. I'm a you know, thinking plenty. Now two have been looking plenty, all scientists, all companies, now only look, look inside the Solwara now. Last time we looking plenty, scientists come. So, suppose you got some blood damages, you got all scientific uh, research been come up in this now, all by helping me blood look so long. Uh, suppose this is a project and we make him some blood background come up. All yet, but come check him now, meeting. By that way, me can check him, environment blue me blood. So, the argument is between two factions of people, the landowners from six villages who want the government to stop the PMIZ and a landowner company backed by a former politician who was commerce minister during the Somari led government. All the illegal uh, shootings or something and by managed by the Department of Environment and Conservation, they got the responsible of the Department of Management Staff. Uh, yes, people have been come one time all up and down, but finally now everything is in order. Everything is on in order, meaning of some uh, project. Project now, I mean, looks how long we saw all uh, directly impacted inside this uh, five uh, kilometers radius. So, look at one blah, community of five mil, uh, kilometers radius, he miss out. And um, all the government will record him, uh, he provide him this uh, election, as the tassel, we go through the election, and make him all leaders, we will some chairmen, and board of directors too. I am finished now. Uh, all the reports from the uh, electoral commission one time, uh, all. Uh, all do documents belong, uh, documents belong, uh, commercial industry long. Registering me, we've got some chairman, a board, a company names, we've got registered and finished. So we've got expected.